Yes, people, you see the title, you see the thumbnail. No, this ain't no clickbait. This is me actually going to tell you why I believe Phil Foden is the best player in Europe right now. We're going to get into it all. I'm going to try and back myself up here because I genuinely believe it. And I want you lot to get involved down below. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here. I want to start making more videos. And I think this is the one where I need to start. If we're going to start making videos uh, today, this is the one I need to start with. Because it's not one I'm seeing enough of. I'm seeing so many titles and thumbnails and streams and content creators bigging up this player, bigging up that player, this youngster's generational, this player's world class. Relax yourselves. Relax the hell down. Relax the hell down. Calm the hell down. No, we need to start putting some respect on Phil Foden. It's becoming evidently clear to me that pretty well nobody outside the Manchester City fan base is, is willing to put the justified level of respect and praise on Phil Foden's name. I'm sorry, it's becoming beyond the joke now how many young players and, and decent players I'm seeing put up against Phil Foden. Like, it's just, yeah, this is it. Phil Foden's a good young player. So every other good young player that comes along will pair them up with Phil Foden and say there's a debate there to be had. The first one I'm going to knock on the head right now is this Foden versus Saka debate, which I'm constantly, constantly seeing. I get bored of these things. I get bored of comparing players to, to to other players. It's a real social media thing, isn't it? I know I operate in social media, but it becomes really forced, in my opinion, for, for engagement and for clicks and that and the other. But this is the big one to, at this day and age. It's Saka versus Foden. Who's better? Even though they don't really play in the same position. Well, Foden does spend time in the right wing, but this is going to back up my point further when we get into the video a bit more. I believe Phil Foden is a significantly better footballer than Mikhail Saka. What, Hugh? What? Why do you... How dare you say that about Starboy Saka? You know what I mean? The pride of North London and that. Mikhail Saka, look at his numbers, Hugh. You can't argue with his numbers. I mean, fuck the numbers. I'm sorry, I don't care about numbers. I was never brought up by, by my dad or anybody who's older than me who got me into football to say... You judge a player based on the numbers you see come up on your phone. Football is a visual thing for me. I watch games with my eyes and I watch how players move. I watch the things they do in the pitch, the way they read the game, their footballing IQ. And all of these things, for me, make up how good a footballer is. The numbers are just one little facet. One little, little facet. Unless you're a striker. Like for me, maybe strikers, you can kind of say, fair enough. They just need to score goals. That's, that's kind of their job. But for these meant to be attacking creative players, there's a lot more to it than just numbers. Now, I'll give you Bikayo Saka's numbers this season. Um, 16 goals, 13 assists in all competitions. He's made 34 appearances in all competitions. Numbers-wise, that's pretty good. That's that, that's very good, to be fair to Bikayo Saka. Um, I can't argue with that. Phil Foden, numbers-wise, has 16 goals and 10 assists in all competitions. Um, so 26 G and A. If you, if you like, um, in 39 appearances, which is very, very good. Uh, and I think there's a lot more context to this this discussion, this debate, than just numbers. And I've made that very clear. This is, this is not just about numbers for me. I don't care. Show your numbers. If you watch football with your eyes, and I've watched Saka and I've watched Foden, uh, both of them with my eyes, plenty of times, live in the flesh. I've, I've been to City Arsenal loads of times. I've watched Saka on TV loads of times. And of course, you know, I, I watch Phil Foden every single week. I think Phil Foden is one of the most magical footballers in the world right now. In the world. And I don't know, is it because he plays for Manchester City? Is it because he's English? Is it because he's part of a successful team? Uh, I don't know what it is. But people will not appreciate this. And I think, like I said at the top of this video, this is the right time to make this video. Because right now, Phil Foden is undoubtedly running the show with Manchester City. I know De Bruyne is back as of late and he's racking up um, assists to beat the band at the time of recording. He just got four uh, against Luton. And Haaland's back recently, just scored five against Luton. But when Haaland and De Bruyne were both absent from the team for, for large parts, like De Bruyne, five, six months, Haaland, two months, the, the, the weight of responsibility that fell on Phil Foden's shoulders was absolutely astronomical. Astronomical. This young guy, even though he is young, because he's been with us so long, the weight of the world fell on him. You now have to be a main man. You now have to be a chief creator. You now have to run games. 
And my expectation for Phil Foden this season was I want to watch him run games. We, I always knew uh, the level of talent Phil Foden had and what he could do with the ball and with you know those moments of magic that he has. But now this season for me it was I want to see him controlling games, set the tempo, make the game yours. Because I first saw Phil Foden when he was 14, 15, playing for the underage teams. Um, back then, I used to watch a lot uh, of the of the EDS and, and the under 18s and all, and all these kind of teams to see what kind of players were coming through. And if you watch Foden back then, it was he was genuinely running games and against lads older than him. He would set the pace. He'd set the tempo. The world was playing at Phil Foden's game. You were playing for Phil Foden, uh, and I wanted to see that become a thing for Phil Foden this season with Manchester City. And sorry, he has. He absolutely has. He looks so... Ex- um, he's always expressing himself. He looks so confident. He looks like he's enjoying his football. He's picking up goals and assists. He's making things happen. In games where it looks like there's nothing happening, Phil Foden is making something happen. You know, like Everton and, and these kind of games, Newcastle and Brentford and Bournemouth and all these kind of games that are a bit stale. Phil Foden is at the heart of everything good about it. Now, if you look at the, the range of positions Phil Foden has played this season, he's played 18 times right wing, once right mid, 11 times in, in the attacking mid, once as a centre forward, and six times as a left winger. If Pep Guardiola is allowing you to, is trusting you to play in five different positions over the course of these 39 games, you know you're a special footballer, I'm sorry. You know you're a special, special footballer. To go back to the Saka versus Foden debate, honestly, hand on heart, do you think Saka could play in these five positions and impact the game the way Phil Foden is? I get it. Saka is very good uh, as a right winger and he's picking up his numbers and that's probably what you want, what you want him to do. But he's not elite and he's not world class. I don't look at Saka uh, and when he's in the ball go, every time he's in the ball, say to myself, oh, shit, here's trouble. Here's trouble. The same way I would for Phil Foden. Every time Foden's in the ball, I'm like, what's he going to do? He's about to do something amazing or he's about to do something positive. Salah, even just just Mohamed Salah, just to compare a right winger with a right winger. Every time Salah's on the ball, or even if the ball is making its way towards Salah, I'm kind of going, oh no, here's trouble. I don't get that with Saka. I don't get that with Saka. So the bottom line is, stop. I will, no, I'm not going to tell you to stop, but I'm giving you my two pence now because I'm bored of the conversation that Foden is significantly better, and I hate the phrase clear, but significantly better at football. He's more gifted, he's more. he's got a higher footballing IQ, and he's got a higher ceiling than Bakayo Saka. That's my opinion. And look, we're at the time of recording, we're one point off the top of the Premier League. We're in the Champions League um, last 16. We've won our first leg against Copenhagen, uh, and we're in the FA Cup quarterfinal. I guarantee you we are not in those positions right now without Phil Foden this season. No chance. Please leave all your thoughts down below in the comments and everything I said. I know it's, a lot of people won't agree with me, but I'm sorry. It's just, just me giving my opinion. I watch these games with my eyes and I don't feel Phil Foden gets enough respect put on his name. I really don't. There's not enough praise given to how special this guy is and how well he's matured and bared the weight of the responsibility. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Leave a like as well on your way out. Subscribe if you're new. Anything else you want me to talk about, leave it down below in the comments. God bless.